we um we were working out of our respective homes uh in my case a small studio apartment i was literally calling up theaters and trying to book castle in the sky and i had the film prints in my apartment i mean it was not the way you can't do that you have to have an office you have to have a place but we didn't have that so uh eventually eventually i told my partner who was like me we were both freelance people we were doing he was doing some freelance producing of tv shows i was writing books and doing other things and Streamline was kind of like a hobby that was coming together as a business. <clears throat> so at one point, we were friends with a, a guy who's uh, controversial today. So I'm going to downplay that a little bit. But we were friends with a very uh, who guy who became famous, but was pretty much unknown back then, who was quite a, a go-getter and an, an amazing talent as an artist and animator <clears throat> and a guy with vision. And that person's name was John Chris Felusi. Yep. Do you know that name? I do. And for any of the listeners who don't, um, John Chris Felusi created Ren and Stimpy. Uh, right. You can, you can say you can just stop right there. All right. So then, so, yeah. That, well, yeah. That, that, that's basically what he's known for, John Chris yeah. Felusi. Yeah. Now John, now John. Again, I could probably do three hours on John, but John, John, and I met uh, years earlier. He was a fan of my books. He was a big cartoon fan. He is a big cartoon. He's probably, probably, I used to, at one point I thought, oh my God, I met somebody who is a bigger fan of animation than I am. And it's John Christopher Lucy. Because I thought I was like the biggest fan that I knew. Um, and, um, and we became friends. And um, and it's uh, there's more to that story. But by 1988, 89, my partner Carl who had done Robotech, coincidentally, this is totally a, on, a, on a side note, he also met John, and they were, Carl was quite the opportunist. He was always trying to pitch new ideas to the studios. And the, so when he met John, John was a young guy who nobody, nobody knew, and like, you know, hey, you can help me pitch my ideas. They were really polar opposite personalities. But uh, Carl uh, took John out to see many, many, many places producers studios thing i remember them they they they, they uh pitched to saturday night live uh I, I say i remember this because i was working with carl and i was friends with john and we all decided when we were dubbing totoro the 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 the, the sound studio on melrose avenue in la that we were dubbing it out of was going out of business and we literally at, while we were dubbing it we're going well do you rent any of these rooms out? Because we go, oh man, we'd rent you the rooms because we got no work. We got no work coming in. I go, so we we rented two big rooms in this in this little building on Melrose, right next to Paramount Pictures on in Hollywood. And, and one one of the rooms was Streamline Pictures, and the other room was Spumco, which was John's company with Carl uh to pitch shows. Streamline was my company with Carl to distribute Japanese animation and dub it. And so we were all together in one place next to a dubbing studio that could dub things or record for us. And so right in the same floor. So we were all together. This is like, oh, uh, I guess it has to be 1989 for sure. And um, Carl is constantly going out on pitches with John. I'm constantly calling up movie theaters and trying to get the posters ready and getting the theater and the streamlined pictures stuff done. <clears throat> and um, um, so Nickelodeon is coming into being. Nickelodeon new animation, Nick Toons, was an agenda that had just started and they were taking pitches. And Carl and John went in and pitched something else that became Ren and Stimpy. I won't go into, I can go into such detail, but I won't. And um, they went in and pitched that. And uh, um, meanwhile, when we started uh, Streamline, um, this is totally side note, uh, 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 a good friend of mine who was, who played little May, we had hired an actress who played the little May, a uh, little girl in, uh, in my neighbor Totoro. And her name was Cheryl Chase. And she had just come to Hollywood and was just starting and dub doing dubbing and any kind of voice work that she could get. 
And we hired her for, for that. And then when we started doing Streamline and Spunko in the same building, in the same studio, in the same place, uh, we asked, uh, John asked Cheryl, hey, uh, I need somebody to answer the phones and uh, help me with this and help me with that. So Cheryl became kind of his assistant and uh, receptionist and even casting director at some point. Cheryl was, of course, a working actress trying, you know, going on auditions and trying to get places. And um, one of the things she did was she, she went to a tryout, an audition for Rugrats. And she got the job of, of Angelica mm -hmm. for that yeah, show. I was just going to say, yeah, Cheryl is uh, well known yeah. as the voice of Angelica. Right. So meanwhile, she's working at the first season of Rugrats. She's also working for Spumco and she's doing all the voices of little girls, women, dogs, anything that wasn't John or Billy West. And it was female, like singing the song log, you know, or any of that stuff. That was Cheryl. And um, uh, so we were doing that. And um, and then. uh I was doing Streamline. I left Streamline. I, I I then, okay, now I'm going back to me. I left Streamline. I worked on 50 Greatest Cartoons. And I became friendly throughout all these years with all the people at Nickelodeon just because they were in my world as it was. And I became friendly with all the people there. And um, and they knew who I was. And I, I ended up, um, uh, when I was working on 50 Greatest Cartoons, uh, uh, one of my friends who was the animation director of, of of many episodes of Ren and Stimpy, his, his name is Bob Jakes, and he uh, he he was the animation director. Uh, if you'll see his name on uh, Stimpy's Inventions and of, others, many other of the St of Ren and Stimpy cartoons, he gets a director credit or a, or an animation director credit. And he he just had gotten a gig since Spumco had closed down. A controversy started, you know things things were changing at uh, Ren and Stimpy. So he got this crazy job up in Canada uh, directing new cartoons using the old uh, uh, character named uh, Baby Huey, an old oversized duck character. And he got the job of doing new cartoons with that character. And unbelievably, I, they asked me to work for Harvey Comics, the people who owned Baby Huey. They had an office in, in L.A. and they asked me to come in and uh, help with some of the production stuff. So I worked, I did that. I ultimately became like a producer on that show. And I worked on that for like a year and a half. And we did a lot of the animation was done in Vancouver and the recordings were done in Vancouver. And I went up to Vancouver a couple of times.